Hi! Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll walk you through a simple yet practical example of using the N8NAI agent to analyze data from a PostgreSQL database. For this demonstration, I'll be working with my usual OEE dataset, a common metric I use to monitor and improve machine performance. So, let's get started. These are the tables in the database of the OE monitoring system I'm using. One of the most frequently used tables is machine underscore master. This table contains a list of machines in the dataset, including the machine ID, machine name, machine number, and other details. Other tables reference this table using the machine ID. The next table is trans underscore output, which contains output data based on the machine ID and the corresponding output time. And this is the table used to store defect data. Next, I created a view table that I use to display a daily summary for each machine. All of my OEE data is consolidated into this view table. Next, to get started, we need to register for an AI service that can access our database. In my case, I'm using Gemini from Google. I signed up on the aistudio.google.com website, created a new project, and generated an API key. This API key will be used in N8N so the AI can connect to the database and analyze the data. You can also use other AI models such as OpenAI's GPT, Grok, or another AI models. Next, I open N8N in the browser, I use N8N installed on my VPS. For the installation guide, you can watch my previous video. As the trigger, let's add the on chat message node. This node will receive commands from the user and send them to the AI agent. This is the interaction point between the user and the AI. In the future, you can also use messages from WhatsApp or Telegram as an interaction method with the AI agent. Next, add the AI agent node right after the on chat message node. This node will process the user's input, connect to the AI model using the API key, and then return the AI's response based on the data from our database. Next, in the AI agent node, go to the chat model section and add the Google Gemini chat model, the same one I obtained the API key for. In the model settings, I'm using Gemini 2.0 flash with a temperature of 0.4. Don't forget to enter the API key in the credential section. You can also use other chat models, depending on which model you already have or register for. Next, in the memory section, add simple memory. This allows the AI to remember the context of previous messages during the conversation, making its responses more relevant and consistent. Next, in the tool section, we'll add several tools using the PostgreSQL tool node. This will allow the AI to interact directly with the database. The first tool is called table list. This will be used to let the AI know which tables can be accessed in the database. In the configuration, Set the operation to execute query, and enter the following syntax as the query to view all tables. Don't forget to set the database credentials, such as the host IP address, database name, username, and password. Rename this PostgreSQL node to table list. This will make it easier to identify later when we connect multiple tools in the workflow. Next, add another PostgreSQL tool, this time named Table Schema. This will be used to view the schema of any selected table. Enter the following query, and add a query parameter in the options. This query is used to retrieve the column names and their data types from a specific table. The query parameter allows the AI to dynamically choose which table to inspect. With this setup, the AI can first check which tables are available using the table list tool, and then view the structure of any chosen table using the table schema tool. 
This combination allows the AI to better understand the database layout before running more complex queries. Next, add another PostgreSQL tool called Execute Query. This tool allows the AI to run flexible SQL queries directly on the database, based on the user's request. The query template is written so the AI can decide which fields to retrieve, which table to query, and, if needed, apply filters using a WHERE clause or group the results with GROUP BY. Because it's written in a dynamic format, the AI can build different types of queries depending on the context of the conversation, without having to manually change the workflow. This means you can ask the AI for anything from a simple data lookup to a more complex aggregated report, and it will adapt the query automatically. Next, in the AI agent node, we'll add an option called system message. The system message is essentially a set of instructions that guides the AI on how it should behave, what tools it can use, and how to respond to the user. Think of it as the AI's rulebook for this workflow, without it, the AI might guess answers, ask unnecessary questions, or even try to run invalid queries. Here's the system message I've created for this project. It tells the AI that it is acting as a data analyst and OEE calculation expert. The AI is only allowed to use the tools we've provided, such as table list, table schema, and execute query, to get information. If it needs data from a table, it must run execute query first and is not allowed to guess or rely on prior knowledge. Now, let's test the flow. I'll start by asking, how many tables are in the database? We can see the AI respond with the total number of tables. In the flow, we can also see a check mark on the table list tool, which means the AI used the tool to get the table count based on the question. Let's try another question, for example, what are the names of those tables? After the flow runs, we can see the AI respond with a list of table names from the database. In the flow, we can also see that the AI is still using the table list tool to retrieve those table names. Next, I'll ask for the list of columns and their data types from the view underscore OEE underscore date table. We can see the tool respond with the column names and data types from that table. There's also a check mark on the table schema tool, indicating that the AI has used it to retrieve the table schema. In the table schema tool, we can see that the AI's input mapping is the table name. Following the query template we created, the AI retrieves the column names and their data types based on that table name. Next, we'll send the following message, how many machine names are in the OEE data, and what are their names? The AI will then respond with the total number of machines along with a list of machine names found in the OEE data. We can also see in the execute query tool that the AI has used this tool twice in its iterations. Let's take a look. We can see what input the AI provided, as well as the query it generated to retrieve data from the database based on the AI's input mapping. From the generated query, we can also see that the AI automatically performs a join with the machine underscore master table to obtain the machine names. Next, let's continue by asking about the OEE data. I'll ask, how many OEE records are there for the machine named Machining01? The AI will then query the database and add a condition based on the machine name, and set them as the answer. We can see that sometimes the AI doesn't use the execute query tool when answering a question. This happens because the question has been asked before, and the answer is already stored in simple memory. By recalling this stored context, the AI can respond instantly without running another query, which helps reduce processing time and database load. To ensure the AI's answer is correct, we also need to verify it directly against the table in the database. Sometimes, we may find that the AI's response is wrong. This usually happens when the AI does not run the execute query tool and instead relies on previous memory, or worse, makes an assumption. In my example question here, after checking the table directly, I found that the AI's answer was incorrect. 
This shows why relying purely on memory or assumptions can be risky, especially when dealing with real data. To avoid this issue, we need to add stricter rules in the system message. For example, we can clearly instruct the AI to always run execute query whenever a question requires a value from the database, even if it thinks it already knows the answer. We can also remind it that it should never guess or use prior knowledge for database values. By reinforcing these rules in the system message, we make sure the AI consistently queries the actual data source, which greatly reduces the chance of giving inaccurate answers. In summary, by combining N8N, the AI agent node, and our PostgreSQL tools, we can create an automated workflow where the AI can query, analyze, and present database information just by responding to natural language questions. We started by setting up the connection to our database, adding tools like table list, table schema, and execute query, and giving the AI clear rules in the system message to ensure accurate and consistent results. We also saw how simple memory allows the AI to remember past answers for faster responses, but also why it's important to verify results and make sure the AI always queries the database for fresh, accurate data. This is still a basic implementation. In a more advanced setup, you could connect the AI to platforms like WhatsApp or Telegram, allowing users to interact with the AI directly through those messaging apps. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.